Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome to our Great Awakening International Kenya uh, Worship Up uh, uh, Assembly Gathering that is via Zoom. We would like to open by, uh, through a prayer, then we continue from where we left you from, for the teachings from More Tomiko. Let us all pray. We praise you, Yahuwah, for this evening and morning to some people in the U.S. We thank you for this Shabbat that you've given us from generation to generation. You are amazing and faithful to our lives. Father, thank you so much for this day and every day, Father. Thank you, Father, because you have blessed us and anointed us over this day. We praise your name. We thank you for this day and each and everyone who has joined us today. Thank you, Father, for all of us over at the Kenyan Mishpaka and the U.S. Mishpaka who have joined you. We thank you, Father. We know, Father, these teachings are going to be of blessings to each and everyone. Praise all, Father, who are going to listen to these teachings and be with them until we finish. In the name of Yahushua Mashiach, I pray, believing. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom to those who are under the dome. My name is Mori Tamiko, and we're like, like uh Murray Douglas said we're going to um can you all still see the screen? Yes, yes. Okay. Time, time. We're going to continue on about understanding the Torah series. Um hope everybody's having a good Shabbat. So we're going to pick up from where we left off. Um, and it's written in Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So, so often we hear of people saying the law or the instructions of the Most High is done away with. And I just refer them to Matthew 5. 17, 18, and 19. And then read the entire Genesis 1. And hopefully that should awaken you to understand that creation hasn't passed away, so the law still stands. So let's let's go into this. Um, and this is a continuation, like I said. So we're going to look at the words abolish and fulfill. The dictionary meaning of fulfill is achieve or realize something desired, promised, or predicted. He wouldn't be able to fulfill his ambition to visit Naples, carry out a duty or role as required, promised, or expected. Some officials were dismissed because they could not fulfill their duties. Abolish, formally put an end to a system, practice, or institution. And if we look, in the Galatians 5, 14, and we read here, for the entire law in one word is fulfilled in this, you shall love thy neighbor of you. So when we look at this section here that I have highlighted, it's the Hebrew word, Pelero, strong G4137, meaning of fulfilled. So, so, when we look at that word, the transliteration, the Phoenician phonetic spelling, palero, and the definition of it means to fulfill, to, to fill, fulfill, complete. And when we look at the other uh, word, katar, katar, katargeo, uh, which definition would means to make idle, to make no effect or null. All right. So what we see here in the scripture said it's talking about Pilar, which means, hey, listen, I come to fulfill or I came to complete this task that I was assigned to do, not to bring an end to something or to stop something. You know, and oftentimes we always hear people say, uh, what what's their favorite line? Christ has redeemed us. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse. And many times I say, well, what is the curse of the law? All right. But 
before we look into that Galatians 3, 10 through 14, when we look at that, it says here, as many as, this is Galatians 3, 10, as many as for of works of the law are under a curse. And what, well, listen, these, 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 these um, Greek and various languages, you got to read them very slow to get understanding, are under a curse. Or it has been written, it has been written, for well, cursed is anyone who don't always follow in the way of this law. So when we look at this word, it says, are many as for of works of the law. And the word here is Strong's G1, 1537, ek. And we see here, and this is what poor translation, poor tra and intentional transliteration does. Excuse me. And the definition of this word ek is from out, out from, among, from, suggesting from the inside outwards. Matthew 5, 18 says this, Truly I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke shall pass away from the law until all is accomplished. And all has yet not been accomplished. Messiah came to fulfill his part, which was to be the redeemer of Israel and to become the ultimate or the last sac blood sacrifice offered for us to be for the remission of sin. So now when we look at that word as written here, it says, for many are ours, the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the law. Now many people will read it, but they don't see the discrepancy in it. In this passage in the Galatians, it's telling you that if you are of the works of the law, you are under a curse, right? Then he said, for it is written, cursed is everyone that continue not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Does that make sense? It's confusing. How are you telling me to do? I'm under curse if I do it, and I'm under curse if I don't do it. So what am I to do? Stand in the middle? But like I say, the poor translation and transliteration or the poor translation, intentional transliteration, the changing of uh, words and letters, which changes the meaning. So when we look at it based on what I had put here, we understand that ek, the meaning behind, the Greek meaning behind the word is ek, from out, out from among, from suggest, out from, suggesting from the interior out. So when we look at it and we fit that word into this paragraph, the original meaning, it says, for as many are as are out from the works of the law, are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law. It makes sense now. It's not competing against itself because the, poor, the, translation, the transliteration of these words. Hallelujah. All right, let's go on. So let's look at Galatians 3, 11 and 12. So it is written, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of you all. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. And of, and the law is not of faith but the man that doeth them shall live in them. All right? And we understand. Here we see the word again, ek. And the law is not out from faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. And you can't say you keep in Torah and you don't have faith, or you have faith, but you don't keep Torah. One time ago, when we were not awake and told the truth, we know it, that worked for us. But now we understand you need both. You need both in, in order. You got to have faith in what the, and belief in the, what the Messiah did. And then he said to what? Keep his commandments. That's the key. For those who without understanding what the law is intentionally are at a bad place.
So when we look at faith, the King Hebrews 11, 1 and 1, the King James Version says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. Uh, the Common English Bible says, Faith is the reality of what we hope for, the proof of what we don't see. The elders in the past were approved because they showed faith. Oh, yeah, I didn't take this off. And we must remember that you who were said through his son, he's the way, the truth, the life. No one coming to the Father but through him. Now, when we think of faith, and let me show you how we all operate on the faith. None of us have never seen the Most High, and none of us have never seen his son. We're all believing and hoping based on the text and the passages that was left to us that one day we will be with him, united with him. But it's the faith that we have in the reality of what we hope for and when we pray for things and when we see things happen. When we stand on the word and he delivers. And to 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 get even get a better understanding when the when the when the Christian church used to talk, but you gotta have mustard seeds made faith. They talk with just a small little bit, and now we understand differently that the reason why the mustard seed would do because it's a full seed. There's no shell; it's one full seed. So you got to have that much purity and belief. It's a pure seed. And what you are hoping for at the end as to why we're doing all this rehearsal. Our faith, it may waver, but we got to always remember, all right, that what our ancestors desired was what we have now. And what we desired is what they had then. There was no remission of, uh, uh, there was no ruach for them to, to come to or to, or to go to. Many times they spoke to the Messiah or they spoke to the Most High to either a prophet or some he spoke to directly as we see. But now we don't have to go to a high priest. Yahushua did that for us. Right where we are right now, rooms, we could go and we could speak to the Father. Hallelujah. So let's move on. So it is written. Proverbs 3, 1 through 4. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add unto thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck and write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of Yah and man. This is what, and this is a powerful proverb. Because it's telling us what will happen if we, when we do these things, when we follow. These are the things that should happen. We're not only keeping the commandments, but we're walking in righteousness. We're, we're protecting our hearts. We're protecting our gates, our minds from the distractions and the, and the wilds of the transgressions and the sins of this world. We're protecting those gates. Continuing on. Galatians 3.13, what is Paul saying to the Galatians? Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hanged on a tree. Anybody have want to take a shot at it to see what, what do they think this, he's meaning when he say this? This is what I was told when I was in the Christian church. And I'm not knocking them. I'm just drawing an illustration. When I asked about are we still under law? Is this verse saying to us that the law is done away with? Or it's gone? Not everybody one time. All right, let me move on. Um, So when we look at it, I have some points highlighted that I feel are key to understanding this verse. All right? So when we look at the first part, Christ had redeemed us. Matthew 1.21 says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt 
call his name Yeshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. And when I do this again, I'm going to add a lot of Old Testament passages uh, that talks about the birth of the Messiah, the coming Messiah. Ephesians 1, 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin in accordance with the riches of Yahuwah's grace. Excuse me. John 14, 6. Yahush, Yeshua said unto him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one coming to the Father but by me. Now, when we look at the word from the curse, Strong's G2671, Katara, curse a cursing, mention a doomed one. And John 10, 18 says, no man take it away from me, but I lay down of myself. I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it again. This commandment have I received from my father. First John 2, my little children, these things I write unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the father, Yeshua, the, the, the Mashiach, the righteous. And he is the propetition for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And we know we're talking about the world of Israel. That's John 3 and 16. We're going to get into that one day. And understanding it from John 17. So we see here the Mashiach became a curse by laying down his life and taking on our sin. He took on the sins of the world, right? That is the curse that would he, he took on, the sins of us for what our ancestors did. And to this day, he is still the intercessor, the, inter, the, 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 the one who stands in the middle of the door that when we repent, confess and repent, the Most High Yahuwah looks at the work that his son did, the blood that he shed, and how he redeemed us. And it cleanses us daily. Hallelujah. So when we continue, look at from the curse, Romans 6 and 23, it says, for the wages of sin is death, right? But the gift of Yahuwah is eternal life to Yahuwah, Yahush, Yeshua, our Mashiach. And I should have do this word wages to get a better understanding of it. Uh, and then we look at 1 John 3, 4, 5. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law or the instructions. For sin is transgression of the law. And ye know that the, he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. So I always ask people this. How then are we to say are they to say that they're not under the law? But sin is transgression of the law. So then that would make you sinless. Because you are not, un, you, do, you do not follow law. So the law does not apply to you on today. Some people take offense at it. I'm just stating the facts. So when we look at the Hebrew word, the Greek word for wages. It's it is interpreted as one version, and it's not the root, is a pay or allowance or the payment for sin. Hallelujah. Uh, okay, let's move right along. The law or instructions. The Torah, the five books, I'm going to change that right now. There was one time I understood that the five books were the instructions. But we're beginning to see more instructions a lot of other places. But that's another time for another day. I encourage you to watch more Yvonne Parker's Understanding Torah on the GAA UK YouTube page. Shanera, if you could find the link and post it in the chat. The Torah, the five books are made of... All right. Yeah. For the UK? Yes. What okay, he teaches the UK. Right. If you go on, the, I think it's the GAA UK YouTube page. Okay, Tota. 
written by Moses, which gave Israel the divine laws and instructions of Yua. What did the New Testament authors, authors, say authors, authors teach from? When was the first book of the New Testament written? These are some things you have to understand and write. And always when you're researching or you're looking into things, you, the key thing is understanding the foundation. What was the original intended purpose? Because if, we, if you keep looking at what was changed throughout time, you may miss it. You always have to go back and start from the beginning. Why was this done? What was the purpose of it? How it affects us today? What transpired that led to various different changes? All right. So also when we looked at hanged on a tree, Acts 5, 29, 30, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey you rather than men. The Yahuwah of our fathers raised up Yahusha, who you hanged on a tree. So if we look through the entire, when we look back at this verse and we look through the entire word, it is telling us that Mashiach, the one who laid down his life, who came from the Messiah, who took on the sins of our, our, us, of Israel, and those who cleave, which really broke the law, he was the one who was hanged on a tree. He was the one who was persecuted. And he said he laid down his life. He did it. Hallelujah. So, if so, if sin is transgression of the law and, and Mashiach redeemed us from the curse of the law and the only way to Yahuwah is through Yahusha and he said, and Mashiach said, he came to fulfill and not abolish the law and the prophets and what is written about him in the Psalms. And if we love him, keep his commandments because upon loving your neighbor and having no other Yahuwah, of the law and the prophets hang. And the New Testament authors taught from the law and the prophets. I ask this question. Who said it? Who done away with it? And who said it's a sin to keep the law, the prophets of Yahuwah and Yeshua? Who's who told us that? Where did it come from? It's not in the Bible. You won't find it anywhere. Because the only persons who have the right spiritually and physically to tell us stop keeping it is the author of it the one who gave it and we could go beyond abraham and even see that from the time of enoch they were keeping torah they were following the instructions so who 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 said to change this it's not not nobody Nobody has the right to change this. No man made person. Nowhere in the scripture can you find all the letters. Can you find it written by Yahuwah or Yeshua telling the old or New Testament believers that the law, the writings, the prophets, all what is written about in the Psalm is done away with. Let me say it again. Nowhere is it written. You're not going to find it. Due to poor translation and intentional transliteration, they twisted the words to make it seem as if that is it. Paul, 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 Paul. Not knocking Paul. I know Paul probably can't wait to get up from his sleep to set the record straight. But anyway, um, let's move on. But Paul said not to keep the law. Now, how many, let's be honest now, how many of us, when we was walking in Christianity, Harped or, 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 or this was a staple in our lives. Why didn't we see it? Y'all could raise your hands, you know. Nobody? Okay, let's continue. More Miko. Go ahead. Um, it never was like a staple. I just kind of I heard it, but I didn't understand it. So I didn't take a side either way. You know, okay. I just kind of kept it in the back of my head. Now, I, I, because I figured if it's in there, it has to be done. But I just didn't get the full understanding of even what the big hoopla was about. So I just kind of stayed 
neutral until I found out better. Hallelujah. Well. Um, for me, um, I just went to church and thought that I can be saved. It was a whole lot of singing and not a lot of teaching. So I just, I went with the flow without no knowledge. You said, you said it was a whole lot of singing and not a lot of teaching? Yes, it was about 10 seconds of teaching. And it was basically speaking of the world, not really much of the Bible. So I praise you who you're getting, giving this lesson. Thank you. Yeah, one that's one of the things. Machuki, go ahead. Uh, I think it was just a misquote. In that, hello, Shalom. Shalom, we can hear you. Yeah, I think it was just a misquote. Uh, in that, uh, when uh, they had actually crucified the uh, the Yeshua, uh, they 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 actually they did see that uh, everything is done and. Uh, it is actually done in that for them, they really believe that uh, uh, Yeshua is actually the son of, uh, you know, God. And then for them, they really felt like everything is done. And that's why they are actually saying that the role was actually done. Oh, hallelujah. And, you know, we, the, isn't it funny? A lot of the same persons who persecuted it had their hands in it. So let's look at the famous writer of Paul, uh, Brother Ron Dalton, Maury Ron Dalton once said, he asked some Christian pastors before, who do y'all worship? Or who do y'all, uh, uh, who's the door? Paul or Yeshua? Then do what he says, that's what Ron said. But let's look at him. Romans 3, 19 and 24. Now we know that what things soever the law said is said to them who are under the law. And this is what Paul, this is in many of Paul's writings. He speaks, he introduced. You're looking for the topic on uh, understanding the Torah. It's a two-part series, I think. Okay, yes, I... Uh... Yeah, I found it. Okay. There are two parts you could post it in the chat and share the link. Thank you. So in many of Paul's writings, he always, in, in many of his writings, he at times specifically point out who and what set of people you're talking to. So when you read this, he said, now we know that the things soever, th that whatsoever things the law said, it is said to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and the world may become guilty before Yahuwah. So he's talking and pointing us to those who are keeping Torah. This is who we're addressing. This is who, 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 who he's pointing out, those who keep Torah. All right. Um, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law, is knowledge of sin, which is true. But now the righteousness of you are without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets, the instructions and the prophets. Even the righteous of you, are, which is by faith of Yahusha, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned, all and come short of the glory of you. Are. Being justified freely by his grace through redemption that is in Yahuwah. And we're going to talk about these highlighted parts that I have here. So people could get an understanding verse 20 and 21. Can you all see the screen, right? All right. So when we look at the first part, Romans 3.20. For therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is knowledge of sin. And it's Strong's number 1537 by word X from out, out from. And the same way as we said in the last part. Then uh, D, Strong's G2041, work. 
usage, work task, employment deed. So when we look at that verse, after getting the interpretation of the, 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 the original context, and I hope to find, I'm still looking for a Hebrew Aramaic Bible, which have the words written in it so we could get a, that because the Greek Septuagint was, in, was, was interpreted from the Aramaic and the Hebrew Bible. So when we look at it, Romans 3, 20, it says, Therefore, from out of the works of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the, is the knowledge of sin. And you have to always ask yourself, well, why would they do this? They wanted to twist it. So when we are outside of the law, you're not going to be justified in the sight of the Father. Because when we understand what the instructions are there, it lets us know what is right and what is wrong. Let's move on to the next part. 21. But now the righteousness of Yahuwah without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Without, strong 55, 65, separate, separate from. Uh, witness, strong 53, 19. Visible, make clear or to know what is hidden. All right. So when we look at it, it's uh, in, in Romans 3, 21, it says, but now the righteousness of Yahuwah separate from the law is manifested, being made visible by what is written in the instructions and what the prophets had to say. So even if you don't believe or you don't take heed, or you don't say you're under law. It's still made visible when we read what is in the, in the instructions all through the Bible and what the prophets have to say. Because like I said, the more you read and you begin to study, you, be, you, be, you begin to see outside of the five books, you see instructions in other books too. You see the prophet given instructions. Command, the, you most are given the prophet's commands and instructions. Hallelujah. So if you can't see it here, you're going to see it in another place. Even the righteousness of you, which is by faith of Yahushua, Hamashiach, unto all upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Let's continue on. Romans 3, 28, 31. Where there is boasting, where, where there is boasting, then it is excluded by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Um. Therefore, we conclude that man is justified by faith without the deeds or the works, without the deeds or the works of the Lord. Is the he, the Yahuwah of the Jews only, is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, also of the Gentiles. We know people can be grafted in. Seeing it is one Yahuwah which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision throughout faith. Do, I had to highlight this, do we then make void the law through faith? And what does Paul say? Yahuwah forbid. I, this, I must be reading a whole different Bible. I must be reading a whole different Bible. So do we then make void the law because we have faith? What is Paul saying to us? Yahuwah forbid. Yea, we establish. We put it into act. We do it. But yet still others will say, we're not on the law. Hallelujah. That sums up Paul's writings of all what people say he said. But Paul said, we are not under the law. Romans 6, 1 to 2. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in grace that may, should sin that grace may abound? You will forbid. How shall we who are dead to sin live longer therein? Now let's look. Grace, Strong 5485. Kindness. Let's sum it up. Sin, Strong's 266. Hamartia. Failure to wander 
definition a sin failure to wander from the law failure to wander from the law of you violates you was law <laughs> so when we look at it what shall we say shall we continue to violate you was law that grace may abound yahuwah forbid how shall we that are dead to violating i suppose to change there to violate you was law live therein anymore This is why when you when people read things for face value of what they said at the time, it, it it could trick us. And I'm I'm going to do a short brief lesson on Luke 10 and 19. Because when I begin to look deeper into that, man, it's saying something from it from a whole different point. But I'll do it. So if we if we should we shouldn't be it, but we understand we live in a human world, and we're having a human experience because of this flesh, our ruachs and our soul desires righteousness, but this flesh of ours desires carnality and lawlessness and rebellion, and that's why we have to suppress and bring our 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 flesh under subjection. Hallelujah. Any questions before I move on? Okay. Romans 6 and 12, but Paul said we are not under the law. Let not, oh, and this is the one, this is the one that they love to use. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey the lust thereof. Let's get in. Strong's 2349. Then Entos, mortal, subject to death. Strong's 43, 4983, body, the flesh, the body, the belief, body of the assembly or church, as some people may say. The ninth Strong's 1939, epithumia, lust, desire, passion, longing. All right. Uh, craving, desire for a desire for what is forbidden. So Romans 6 and 12 is saying to us, let not sin therefore reign in the flesh, in your subject to death flesh, that ye should obey the desires from what is forbidden. This is what Paul is saying to us. So persons can get an understanding. I don't know what you mean, don't let it rain. What's the verse that's nah, coming to my head? For the weapons of war, our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yahuwah, to the pulling down of strongholds. When those thoughts come then, cast, pull them down, pull down the strongholds, cast down the thoughts and the vain imaginations. Oh, it's not a one-day fix. You will have to fight that for a period of time. Because those thoughts lead to us allowing sin to reign, what we see with our eyes, what we hear, and what we speak, we have to bring them under subjection. And that goes for all of us. A lot of us, all of us got work to do on ourselves. That's why it's an awakening. We're continually being awakened. We're rehearsing. We're trying to get back, make this thing become so normal in our lives that it's nothing for us to keep Torah. It's nothing for us to dwell together. And this is why we come to the feast days. We're practicing. All right, rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. That is what Jeremiah 31 is telling us. Listen, y'all practicing. So when y'all come to that final banquet, it's going to be so easy for us to do because we have been rehearsing it. That is why. Verse 13. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto you and those that are alive from the dead and your members are as instruments of righteousness. Now watch this, 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 this part of here. Strong 3196, melos. Members definition, a member, a limb of the body, of bodies given up to criminal intercourse. Because they are they because they are as it were members belonging to a harlot's body, 
bodily organ limb member. This is what it's saying. Strong harp, uh, 3696. Hop, hopalon, instruments, a tool, an implement, preparing a thing, a weapon. All right? So when we look at all these, it's hard for you, me to understand. How can you all read this verse and then say, he said, we're not, un this is saying we're not under the law. He's talking about, he's telling us, and based on the definition, members and instruments, it says, neither yield your body as a tool of unrighteousness. And it's telling us what type of unrighteousness and what, what we should be doing. Anyone want to figure out what Paul is trying to say in this passage of verse? Take a look at it and read it. This is, look what he's saying. Neither ye, and if you go back, remember this is a continuation from verse 12. He said, let sin not reign for in your mortal bodies. We understand this body is subject to death. Don't let, it shouldn't obey the desires of what is forbidden. Then he goes on to say, neither yield your members. What is Paul saying to us in the nutshell? What is he trying to tell us? Anyone? Mary, can you read it out loud? I, I can't see it because it's really small on the screen from on my phone. Okay, so in this for us is the Romans uh, 6, 6 13. It's saying, Neither yield your members as instrument of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield you and yield yourselves unto you as though they are alive from your dead from the dead and your members an instrument of righteousness. Now, when we look at the strong's definitions we have here, both of them, one is telling us members. In the, interpreted as the definition in the Greek is melos, which means members, a limb, a member or limb of the body, of bodies given into criminal intercourse. All right, and they gave us a def a, a, a example here because the members were belonging to a harlot's body. And then hoplon, instruments, a tool or implement preparing a thing for a weapon. So what is Paul trying to say to us? Yeah, or saying to the, 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 the Romans. Um, I'll take a, I'll take a shot at it. Um, is it, don't sharpen the, the tools of your, your body. Don't keep on, um, sending to your body because you're not supposed to be feeding your flesh, but you're supposed to be feeding your Ruach HaKodesh, supposed to be feeding your soul. Exactly. Hallelujah. Exactly. And uh, the, exactly what she said. In other words, because we know what happened. The more, the more, the more, the more we get into sin. And it's clear he's talking about our physical body intercourse. The more we do it, what happens? We have a desire for it. Maury Douglas. Shalom, shalom. Uh, this means that we should present our bodies for the righteousness of the Most High. Hallelujah. Yes. Exactly. And that's why when you go back from the beginning and you begin to read into it from verse 1 and 2, look what it's saying, starting to the bottom. We, what shall we say then? Shall we continue to violate Jehovah's law that grace abound? Jehovah forbid, how shall we that are dead to violating Jehovah's law live therein? All right, verse 12. Right, he said, let therefore sin let 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 not sin therefore reign in your subject to that flesh that you should obey the desires from what is forbidden. 13. And then he goes on to say, Neither yield your body as tools of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto Yahuwah as those that are alive from the dead. And your members as instruments of righteousness. Y'all stop doing foolery. Stop sleeping around here. But we see when we read it and we don't do our best to use these, the, the original text of it, other meanings, it could give us a whole different meaning. And like, like, like uh, Mia said and, and Maury Douglas said, if we keep sharpening these things, what do you think is going to happen? 
we could continue to violate Yahuwah's law. And then feel, oh, we have grace. Hallelujah. But Paul said, verse 14. So, Romans 6, 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Now, based on all what we have just read, Paul spoke of many different laws that we, are, we cannot, that we cannot assume that Paul is always speaking of the law of Yah, of when he mentions the word law. Paul makes mention of many laws. In fact, he makes mention of at least seven. My question is you, which law was Paul talking about? Thanks to Dr. Howard for this part of my text, for, bringing, for uh, uh, assisting me with this. And based on what we read just now, is Paul talking about the entire Torah? Is he saying that for sin shall not have dominion of you, for you are not under the law, but under grace? But based on what we just read, he gave us a definition. He's, all through that, he's telling us not to violate it. We're not under this hole, this stronghold of sin. But we have the grace that the Most High has given to us. And that's his kindness. That even when we violate this aspect of the law by turning our bodies over, by constantly violating it, we have grace. And that's why he opened up Shall you continue to do wrong just because you have grace? No. Because we are under that. That should not have you and in bondage. And I can imagine Paul passion. Why we continue violating it. And see how we talked about law of Yah, the law of sin, the law of sin and death, the law of the Ruach of life, the law of faith, the law of righteousness, and the law of Mashiach. Verse 16, 6 and 19. I speak of the man of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanliness, unto iniquity, unto, unto iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members as servants of righteousness. And the breakdown of strongs, I read infirmity, 769, weakness, frailty, suffering, calamity. Or sickness of the soul, want to strength of capacity, strength and capacity requisite. Uh, uh, uncleanliness, Strong's 167, Akatharsia. Definition, physical or moral sense, impurity, lustful, luxurious, excuse me, profligate living and improper motives. Oh, I suppose to change to put this up there. So, verse 19 said, I speak after the man of men. Because of the weakness of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members as servants to profiligate, profiligate living of impure motives unto, unto iniquity, unto iniquity, continuous sinning. You know? Anybody want to give me a, a, a quick definition of what is iniquity? Go ahead. Ark Henry. No, oh, okay. I was going to ask a question um, before you answer that, but maybe this will fall into place. Are we looking at this as a whole where we say that our body is not ours? So the things that we do against Torah, against what uh, Yahuwah has said, um, causes or is part of these impurities. Um, and, and this is what Paul is trying to tell us, basically. Yes, the, our actions, even our motive, even our thoughts affects our physical bodies. Does anyone know what is one of the number one cause for cancer? Stress. What would you say, Henry? Stress. You could tie it into that. Yes, unforgiveness and bitterness. And I, I was told that by a doctor. 
it affects it affects our bodies when we worry when we stress and we see it how, how many times or how, how many people have ever had an experience where the people is, is, is say the persons when somebody dies that they have to you know strength gird up yourself strengthen yourself because some that that thing is so painful that it people just die i'm talking but they 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 gone they have no desire to be here and it's, i I'm, I'm i'm trying to understand that like how i know it's hard but i've seen people when a husband die a few months or weeks a, a, a time later the wife goes and they can't get over that so this is what paul is saying to us in all aspects Go ahead, uh, Henry. So just based off of that, it sounds like that there's more than we understand or things that we, we have been suppressed to understand based off of our captives. Yes, of, 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 most definitely. This is why... Um, Oh, what's it? What's what's it? In the in 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 the, in the chapter in Galatians, it's right in my head, you know. When he said to, when he tell us, we wrestle not against principalities and powers. We wrestle not against the flesh, but against the principalities and power, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. These are spiritual beings. All right. And he's telling us to take control of, have control of what our minds. Break every stronghold, cast down every vein. These things affect us. If someone begins to get angry or sad, they either get depressed or they get in a rage. And then what comes in when somebody gets depressed or they get too worried or stressed, what is the next unrighteous rock you think that will creep in? Violence? Suicide. Mm. For depression. And those who get angry, violence, anger, and murder. And that's how the enemy plans it out to, dis to destroy you. And this is why we must remember, control our thoughts, protect our eye gates. And now you see how it goes from just the, 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 the thought of the mind or what we see to an action. This is how the enemy, and guess there's another spirits and unrighteous spirits keep coming, coming, coming. So, you know, based off of what our ancestors and what we actually are going through through our capital, it's amazing that we are no, that we are still here. So that in itself is proof that we are his because of the fact that we can survive these these things against us from the other nation and still going strong. And there must be something that occurred within the last few years that now is getting us to become stronger and seeking the truth. Therefore, uh, you know, being blessed and being in the presence and having the honor to have teachings from you, Moray, uh, to Nico, uh, to yeah. for us to, to move forward. And it makes it a little easier that the things that we've thought about or questions that we have, we have someone to go to to actually help us straighten that out. Hallelujah. So, yeah. yeah, but that, you know, you know, it is so surprising. You know, people try to come. Here's the funny thing. All right. Hitler was an Ashkenazi. Yes. We know that. Yep. He just didn't like how those high, mighty, and wealthy ones were treating the other ones. So you know what he said? I can get y'all. Y'all too rich. Y'all believe. And see, they were they were controlling the government inside or even in his own party. Mm -hmm. They were controlling the world different. He understood. So you know what he said? I can punish y'all. He punished his own people. Mm -hmm. He punished his own people, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, and he still hated black people. Now, don't, 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 don't forget that he, he, there was no love. He did some things to some black people that we don't know, but they tried to hide deeply. 
they were doing a lot of experiments. So, and then, man, there is so much things when you, when it, every time I list, watch the Holocaust, I remember, it is it Barack too, I think, I can't remember what it says. And he would remind them of who they are in their captivity. And I always say to people, the Ashkenazis couldn't be the ones because they knew they were Jews before they even went into that captivity. Mm -hmm. You know, so I said that to say this, when you look at slavery and all that happened, and I don't, I honestly don't blame the, those who inflicted it, but our ancestors who understood what the call, what the, what, what had to be done. We had a choice. All right. And when you look at it, how are we not have a higher rate of suicide? When they boil, they skin, they tarred, they feathered, they threw overboard and let chains of people go under the sea. When the men and women experience their children, their wives or their husband raped in the front of them, when your children were taken away from you and sold, even, and the word said some of them did go into madness. How are we not? How can we look at those photos? How can we look at these things? And this is up until the 60s, or could be even the 70s, when they were still doing these things. And we see these things coming back or trying to manifest itself today. Mm -hmm. And like you said, uh, how are we not have the highest rate of suicide? Because of the trauma we ex ancestors experienced. There's not one of us here can watch a movie on slavery or watch something on slavery and don't feel some type of way or don't begin to cry. Why? Somebody from our bloodline was there. And this is what Paul is saying to us. He, these, in other words, for me, Paul is trying to protect us from these things. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, don't do these things, you know. They could destroy you. Yield yourself as the servants of righteousness. Now, you see, you see how we went from one thing here to a whole other chain of things and how these things affect us throughout time. This is Paul writing this somewhere doing 40 AD or something, wherever he writes this, 40 or 100. And Yes, in 2023, now reading it and having an understanding of it by way of the Ruach, of course. And you know, a lot of times, um, and I know this is a perfect bridge between um, us here in the, in the States, in the Western, and the continent, that we spend a great deal of time studying ourselves and our history here, here in the continent and in the Caribbean. But we need to spend more time studying uh, our, our brothers and sisters in the continent. There's things that has occurred in the Congo by some of the European uh, leaders uh, like uh, uh, Leopold and the number of people that he killed in the Congo, or to watch our brothers and sisters work in those mining fields um, and, and, and dying in those, in those things. And even, um, you know, the, the, the government and how it's, it's corrupted, or even how the continent has been divvied up in 54 countries, but that's not doing to the people of the continent, but for the colonialists. And so now we recognize them as such. And the laws that are actually put in place that they are still under, which are not the laws of the most high, which is higher than the common law or the statute laws that are placed there in the continent. So this is awesome that we're creating this bridge and spending more time to understand what Paul is trying to tell us because the things that he's done is still relevant to this day. Hallelujah. Most deaf. And that's, and you know, we see the change. It, you think it's by accident that now, as we continue on, we have connected to the, back to the continent, to where we came from. You know, when I, I can share, I can share some, my 
ancestral lineage points to Kenya. I'll share on the when I did the the test, it points back to Kenya. I have some Kenyan DNA inside of me. So let's look at it before we wrap up. I think I can end with this part of it here. Because I know there are other Shabbat lessons we want to wait on. Romans 6 and 23. Starting from 22, all right, I say, Javier. But now being made free from sin and become servants to you, ye have your fruit unto holiness. And the end of and, and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of you is eternal life through Yahusha, our Yahusha Mashia. Excuse me. So I know we have been on for a while. I don't want to go further. All right, that's going to take us in. We will start right here. But Paul said the law is sin. Man, that's the whole um another chapter aspect of it um we would stop right there uh, for now and continue on and i want you all to be encouraged and so it's for me to take you all to get an understanding of how not only what paul said but how to use these you have your strongs you have your concordance to look at the word if you're reading something on the understanding as it doesn't make sense to you Go and look up the, the Strong's Concordance. Get your Bibles. Get the, get Look at the original meaning in the Hebrew, uh, the Greek Septuagint, uh, uh, the Synodicus, those books that they've been hiding for us for decades, uh, thousands of years. It helps give us an understanding. So we see here what Paul is trying to tell us, that it's more of a mental state of being on a spiritual enlightenment. We can't do these things, all right? And for us today, you know, and this is where the fighting uh, uh, um, begins. We have to fight for our salvation. Like I said on the call last night, the 400-year curse is up. So now we have to begin to petition Yahuwah to redeem our generation. He said we were going to be, the nation would afflict us 400 years. That's spiritually and physically. So now we got to redeem all, our entire heritage. We got to redeem it. All right. I'd like to say this to you, um, Maury, if you don't mind. Right. Um, because of my area of focus is commerce and wealth building within our nation. I appreciate what the president of Kenya is actually doing with the visas, where the uh, members of the diaspora uh, does not require a visa to enter into Kenya. Um, and also right now the AU or the African Union, which is equivalent to in some aspects, the uh, European Union, the AU are in talks now into looking to um, allow free trade among all of the African borders, the 54 countries in order to increase the economy of the continent and to work on creating a currency or one currency that we can use to start building wealth across not only the diaspora, but also through the continent to uh, reduce or to prevent or even eradicate the exploitation of labor and minerals and resources from the continent. And those are one of the things that I'm actually focusing on to ensure that that continues going forward. So I want to say a hallelujah and total rabah to the continent and to Kenya and their president's leadership on opening the doors uh, for us to start to come together. Hallelujah. Well, that's good. So that means like, like we don't need a visa to go to Kenya. We, we Our first trip may be to Kenya. <laughs> you know? So um, it, it has been truly a, a blessing. I'm always encouraged when I, uh, because every time I'm here, it's surreal. It's like, how am I connected to people in Kenya or on the continent? You know how hard it is for ancestors during slavery to even envision that they would still connect with those who who left Africa, they 
they were told one thing, when you go to the store, you ain't never coming back. And it shows the connection because here we are. We weren't at Sinai. We weren't in Egypt. We didn't cross the Red Sea. We, did, we didn't stand there when they was crucifying or, 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 or condemning the Messiah. But our ancestors were there. And we feel all those things. It passed down. We weren't there doing the transatlantic slave trade, but our ancestors were there. But here we are today. Say, coming back, not only as a nation or saying we, 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 we want to connect with our brothers and sisters, but we're understanding and we're waking up to the truth that who we are, the chosen people of the book. And we have the islands, we have Africa, and we have the Americas. And we cannot forget our brothers and sisters in South America as well. I think, but I think we're growing a connection down there. This is prophetic. This is history. We're coming together as one. Oh, and the Father got more things to do. And we're all here to learn from each other. We all got to teach each other and instruct each other. Hallelujah. So I will rest with that. And once we get off, I will show um, uh, you others, some other, two other things that I found about my genealogy as well. And the importance of knowing because I want to know. I was glad when I was able to say to people, well, I'm from Africa, but uh, my, my, well, I'll show you all when I do it. So Maury Douglas, when, when, when I come to Kenya now, you got to give me that shirt. I love that shirt. All right. <laughs> so hang it up and keep it safe. <laughs> Let Robert keep it. <laughs> all right. So Maury Douglas, I turn it over to you. You can share any words on, you can close this out in prayer. But we're not going to leave. We're just going to sign off because uh, we're going to put the recording on YouTube. Uh, you, know, you could share our link in the chat too so persons can know where to get to the YouTube link. Thank you okay, so man. much. Welcome. Go ahead. Come on, sister. Yeah. Oh, she was just saying, okay. Okay, fine. Thank you so much for today's teachings. We are so much happy uh, to come again back uh, online with you together with everyone who has joined us today. It has been an amazing time and an uh, amazing journey that we've had today, uh, right from the morning Shabbat gathering and uh, this Zoom meeting. Luckily, uh, some Mishpaka have joined us and we are very many in this room I guess you can just have a few of uh, the people that are around here. Most definitely. Uh, oh, you got a park house. Oh, look uh, everybody. These are people behind me here. I'm trying to show you around. Shalom, so, shalom. Look, boy. Shalom, oh, no. shalom. Hey, listen now, when we come Kenya, we got to have some homegrown Kenyan food now, all right? <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Most welcome. Definitely, we would not be doing introduction to each and everyone. Probably, maybe after this gathering, we shall be sharing with you pictures of everyone in this room. Please do. As well as the meetings of uh, the morning gathering. We are so much blessed. Uh, welcome here, Brother Henry Davis, the links, Machuki, Makuani Navalo, Mary Madenge, Gadal Yahoo. Yolanda Mayo and the Galax Tab S3. I don't know who is this. We are very grateful for today's, today's teachings. And uh, we would like to close by the word of prayer as we are going also to seek prayers for the Kenyan Mishpeka and the growth of the Kenyan Assembly. Thank you so much. And let us now pray. We praise you, Yahuwah. We thank you, Yahuwah, for this day and this evening. We praise your name, Father, because you are amazing and faithful to us. Thank you for Moritomiko's teachings. Thank you, Father, for the great awakening international mishpakas in the U.S., U.K., Ghana, Zambia, and Kenya, Taraj. We ask you, Father, to lead us through the Ruach HaKodesh. Thank you, Father, for today's law and the statutes that we've learned. Thank you, Father, for every step that we are making, Father. 
We praise you, Father, because you are our leader and you are going to make us grow and grow tremendously. We know, Father, you are with us and you are not, you, you are not going to leave us alone. Thank you, Father, as we are going to depart. May you are work, Father, lead us until next week is Shabbat. In the name of Yahusha Mashiach, I pray, believe in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, YouTube. Shabbat Shalom. Those who are on Zoom, we can stay on. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom.